Imagine crafting the ultimate time management and productivity system for your brain that requires minimal maintenance by combining your digital calendar with pen and paper. After months of trial and error, I have found the perfect digital and analog balance that keeps me a thousand times more organized and stress-free. So I'm gonna show you the exact formula that I use to make calendars and journals work together, a simple system that puts your self-care first without sacrificing productivity, and then the planning secret that helps you say no to what drains you and yes to what really matters. But first, let's talk about why most people's productivity and time management systems are like trying to eat soup with a fork. It's technically possible, but painfully inefficient. So, when it comes to combining digital and analog tools, 99% of people mess this up so badly, it actually creates more chaos than it solves. And I know this because when I left my healthcare career to start a business as a health and well-being coach, I attempted to expand my time management and productivity system just like beyond my journal. Time to be more productive. And clearly it didn't work out. This made me realize that it wasn't the tools that were failing me and it certainly wasn't my journal. The real problem was that I was trying to use calendars the same way that I saw everyone else doing it. I basically had no constraints on how to use it and I was simply just like adding on whatever was happening in life. Even after having some success of being introduced to the ideal calendar and time blocking, I felt like I truly didn't understand the purpose of each until I learned this. So your calendar has the primary function of telling you when things are going to happen, not to be confused with what should happen. So appointments, events, and deadlines. Your journal helps you sort out what should happen and why. So brain dumps, task lists, reflections, ideas, affirmations, memories, and anything else that gives you clarity. Think of your journal like a filter. Before anything hits your calendar, it goes through your journal first. And I've learned that the more intentional I am with this, the less daunting and the more exciting my calendar looks. So I'm gonna show you the main way these two work together instead of against each other. But first we need to lay out the constraints starting with the ideal calendar. So your ideal calendar should represent your energy protection plan. This is going to help you get more stuff done, but more importantly, it's going to put you first. So this first set of blocks are the most important blocks of this entire calendar. And if you have any resistance to scheduling this, you're probably going to find resistance to doing anything else in life. It might feel silly to schedule this stuff or maybe even make you feel a little guilty, but if you're anything like me, you tend to neglect yourself if you're not reminded. So these are your recovery blocks. If you try to cut corners on these first two blocks and this group of recovery blocks, like don't even waste your time watching the rest of this video because everything anchors on these blocks. <laughs> Say blocks again. Start with a seven to eight hour sleeping block along with a wind down period for bed. And before you say something like, I don't have time for this, think about how often you might say something like, I don't have energy for this. So there's actually two more blocks that go here that dramatically impact your energy and improve your productivity, but it's going to make sense to add them later. This next group of blocks are your work blocks. Obviously, you're just gonna time block when you're at work, but don't include any additional working time other than what your scheduled hours are. Remember, this is your ideal calendar, not what's actually happening in real life you workaholics. <laughs> so this next block often gets neglected by being overrun by work blocks. And when it morphs into the working block section, that's when we start burning the candle at both ends. But it's actually part of your recovery blocks and it's simply your lunch blocks. Now, I know there's people out there that function perfectly fine with working lunches, but if you're not functioning perfectly fine, a working lunch is not for you. And like lunch, these next set of blocks can go either way. They can either substantially drain you or set the tone for the beginning and the end of your day. These are often overlooked pockets of times that can rejuvenate you when used intentionally. So things like morning prep, commute, all the stuff that happens between work and personal stuff, transition blocks. 
So now that we've gotten clear on the ideal version of what absolutely has to happen in our day, we can move on to where the magic happens. These are blocks of time that allow you to get more stuff done and more importantly, create boundaries around the things that matter to you the most. These are your power blocks. These are blocks that begin to connect your calendar to your journal and prevent it from being life's dustpan. The more you protect these blocks, the less you'll stress about fitting everything in and the better you'll get at using your time for what actually matters to you. 10x blocks are the time periods where you do things that actually move you toward your goals. So like spending time on a creative project or maybe exercising. 2x blocks are essential life maintenance blocks like having to go to the DMV or doing laundry. But there's one final block that makes or breaks this whole system. This is what gives you the backbone to say no to things that violate your 10x time and your recovery time. The busier you are, the more of these blocks you're gonna need. But at the very least, you need at least just one of these a week. And this is your boundary block, AKA your weekly planning block. Yes, we are planning to plan. So what are we actually doing during this planning block and how does this all connect to using a journal? Well, I'm getting to that, but first we need to set up a separate calendar for the actual events of your life. So aside from keeping track of what's going on in your life, the reason we're creating a separate calendar for this is so you can quickly spot the things that cause you to deviate from your ideal calendar. Having these calendars overlap will make you more proactive instead of reactive. And it actually reveals your weakest boundaries, like who and what tends to violate your recovery time and your 10x time. It also allows you to immediately adjust in real time rather than having to wait like a whole nother month to try a new bullet journal spread. Anyways, this is where all the meetings, appointments, social events, and deadlines go. Pretty straightforward. Also, I've made a checklist and basically a free beta mini course thing that goes into the details of everything we've covered so far, plus what we're about to cover with the journal integration thing. Okay, so now time for the task management part. This is my favorite part of the whole system because it's basically a more sophisticated digital version of my most reliable bullet journal spread of all time. In fact, it works so well that I was actually able to completely eliminate this setup from my journal to remove any duplication. It was a little bittersweet, but I don't regret saving time. So here's how it works. Using the task feature in Google Calendar, pick a maximum of three things to get done each day. These should all fall within your 10x and 2x time blocks. At least one of these should be a 10x task. If you're only doing one thing, you might as well just make it count. This is what leaves you feeling satisfied, even if you set out to just do the tiniest thing. For larger tasks, we're gonna use the open system. Super original, I know. <laughs> So you're going to create a task and put open in the title and then in the description, list all the tiny tasks that contribute to completing the project. If you can, put them in chronological order. And also, if you struggle to break down tasks into smaller ones, just use like ChatGPT to brainstorm this. Thank me later. Okay, so now that we've got our two calendars set up and the task management system down, let's talk about what you're actually doing during this boundary block slash planning block. Using your journal, you're going to brain dump a to-do list of everything that's taking up brain space. Then categorize everything as either 2x or 10x and then divide it again into urgent and non-urgent. Then pick at least one 10x task that you want to focus on for the week and add it to your tasks on your calendar. So the more specific you are with what you're doing during this time, the easier it's going to be to say no to anything that randomly tries to pop up into your schedule. So you might be wondering why I don't just do like the to-do list listing task management stuff just within the calendar itself or somewhere digitally. Well, have you already forgotten? But seriously, having to just slow down and write everything down is a filter in itself. At least once a week, just use your journal and reflect on your experiences. Ask yourself stuff like, what worked this week? What was a hot mess? Where did you tend to overschedule yourself? And what did you fail to say no to? Did you have any wins? What tasks need to be like even smaller? 
Every single time that I feel a sense of overwhelm creeping up, I know it's because I need a planning block. So if you put in the time to just set all this up just once, I guarantee you'll notice a huge positive impact on your time and energy without even feeling like guilty about it. So don't forget to download the checklist below and then check out this next video to make sure you truly understand how the journal works so that you don't miss the whole point of this calendar. TTYL.